And we're on. Okay, so hello, it's Peter and... Andrew. Andrew, good to see you again. Uh, we're here looking through a the next podcast. This is the third podcast since December on TGS Talks, what we're doing, who we're speaking to, and why we're doing it. So first off, who are we and who are we speaking to? We are uh, TGS, the um, international network, and we are speaking to the members of that network to let them know what's happening. This podcast, I guess, is the equivalent of a cup of tea uh, with me or with you to tell them what's happening. I, I feel I should be sort of clinking a glass of tea or a cup of tea with you, but since we're dry here at the moment, let's move on to the world of TGS. What's happening over this cup of tea, Andrew? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of things going on. Um, last time we spoke, we were in the creation phase of TGSU. Uh, and setting all the projects in motion. So that's set from now until the conference season in May. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a lot of things, uh, a lot of things happening. A lot of things in between, I mm -hmm. guess. I mean, I'm looking at the list of stuff that, uh, that we've drawn up. Uh, regional development, West Mediterranean, and then Southeast Europe. What's, what's on the agenda for this? Yeah, that's the first uh, webinar sessions for the new regional development uh, groups. And as you, if you've been paying attention in the last podcast, uh, there's no quiz, but uh, not yet anyway. Uh, <laughs> you know that there's been, we're going through a phase of regionalization in the network, and there are eight regional leaders. So the Nordic Baltic, Southeast Europe, West Mediterranean, North Europe, places like that. Mm -hmm. And these uh, webinars, we've, I've set up a webinar for each area, mm -hmm. just to talk a little bit about it, to say which countries are involved in that area and what sort of activities they have going on in their development to see how you get involved. And you may even be able to meet the leader from that regional area. Right, okay, so these are also the people who uh, drive members of their staff to uh, to participate in the various interest groups as well, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. And, and we're doing okay for that? Yeah, very good this year. The, uh, there's been a much bigger take up of the TGSU interest groups. Uh, and again, special thanks to Kaylin McDonald for being a key player in the um, ESG Activator Power Hour sessions. Now, you're ah, gonna, you're looking at me with that acronym I, I, <laughs> face. I, I, that, that's management speak, go for it. Yeah, it's, well, the, the, the Power Hours, essentially it's a business development uh, club in a way, but it's a technique. You block one hour every week or every day if you like and you have a list of people you're going to call to try and get a yes or a no mm -hmm. answer for them mm -hmm. and it's fairly well formatted to take the fear out of calling right but the 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 progress you make by doing this systematically is an, is, is phenomenal mm -hmm. so you might think oh, i don't need this i'm beyond that i'm a much better expert than that but in fact the value is huge yeah, so it's yeah. for everybody i mean kaylin he's uh, He's the boss yeah, yeah. in Canada, I mean, and he's, it, he's launched into it. I mean, it's, it's, it's obvious, it's straightforward, and yet so many people don't like doing it because they're used to people coming to them looking for advice. And I guess so many of the collaborators in the network have the view that I want to help people. Mm. It's not that there's a reluctance, it's they want to help people. So they have to reach out to people to help them. Uh, 100%. And, and yeah. the feeling of satisfaction that comes from that is uh, immeasurable. It is, it is measurable. And the, the business which is generated is immeasurable as well. Well, that, well yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, we hope that's measurable. Well, there, that is measurable, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right, TGS Book Club. Yep. Now then, you've got a book coming up and you've got a club coming up. It, um, how's it going? It's the first, this is an experiment. Uh, and we, this came up, that's, there's an idea of uh, Anais, our former um, um, intern and former uh -huh. communications person, who said, why don't you get people to bring their favorite book to the conference and then everyone can exchange their books. So that's something part of the fun uh, for the conferences. But then there are some books which are, I figure are unmissable. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've decided to do one book as a book club. So it's split over eight sessions and we're gonna chat about each chapter, you know, just half an hour or drop in for 10 minutes, say hello, just to talk about this book. Mm -hmm. And this first one is Dieter Helms? Uh, Legacy, 
And executive summary, please. Yeah, executive summary is the book is how to build the sustainable economy. Right. So think global sustainability, the TGS network. Knowing how to build a sustainable economy is fairly key. Yeah. And I think nobody would say that they're against sustainability or a sustainable economy. But in fact, uh, Dieter suggests that there's a lot of changes we've got to make and to get away from ideas of um, commodities and rational consumer behavior as yeah. an economy, but in thinking in terms of capital. What do we need to save so that the economy is uh, you know, renewable. Renewable. Mm. Keep going. Okay, right. So uh, the book club. Now, when does that take place? That's starting this week on Thursday, Excellent. which this podcast probably goes out on Wednesday. So it's tomorrow. Or if you're listening to it after the fact, you've missed it. You've missed it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll probably record the sessions. And if right. you're a TGS member, you'll be able to access them at these uh, sessions. Mm. And you also, you'll be able, you have a link to the book right. uh, in the in the comments here. Okay, so uh, moving on, ISQ M1. This is what people are doing already. Yeah, but you're going to tell me something more. Yeah, well, it's it's a change. The international um, standard on quality management uh, has changed recently. So this is a webinar coming up with uh, our Sylvia and Nizar, who'll be talking about how to implement the ISQ M1. Right. Okay. So, so if you are involved, you'll know what this is. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't put it in place yet, you'll know you should. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, uh, this webinar will help you get through those. And this is very much, uh, it's, it's not a policing activity. It's a, a, it's a forum where you can ask the questions that you didn't think you could ask because you're going to get the answers. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And in fact, the ISQM, there's so many acronyms in the world of uh, accounting. And, and everywhere, I guess, everyone's got their, their acronyms. Yeah, barriers to entry. And we love them, and we love them. But basically, this is, uh, we use the, uh, a version of the ISQ M1 when new members try to join TGS yep. so as a filter. So the fact that we use that means that we can call ourselves a network and show a general level of quality rather than an association. Mm -hmm. We just let you pay and join. Yep. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. So, moving on. <clears throat> TGSU. There are a number of things going on in TGSU. One of which, or the next thing, yeah. um, is a, a a slot on something you put down as client listing. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to be stupid here and say that's what you do anyway. But you're going to say to me, no, no, Peter, you're just not listening. <laughs> exactly. So tell me why yeah. I'm not listening. Well, client listening. Yeah, of course, everyone listens to their clients, and so you should, so that you can offer them the services that they want, and they will tell you what they want. But often uh, we've got lots of biases. Uh, our clients don't really say what they mean, um, don't really know what they mean. And this is a system which is, uh, in fact, it's a, the CEO of a firm called My Customer Lens, who use artificial intelligence and fuzzy logic and lots of things I don't understand to take all your data from your clients, like conversations you've had, questionnaires you've filled in, um, things they've said about you online or recorded conversations, and they, they do their uh, artificial intelligence on it, and out comes non-biased uh, actual things that the clients are saying about you and about what they want. So if you want to serve your customers better, you've got to better know what they want. Mm -hmm. Okay, and presumably if, they, if you know what they want, and, and they perhaps haven't even expressed because they don't know themselves yeah. what they want, yeah. you're in a better position to be able to really tap into their conscience yeah. to let them know that you know what they need for their business. Absolutely, it's yeah. like it's a kind of it's like a technology in a sense, which is sort of magic. Yeah. Uh, but it, we talk about this a lot. It's like when we come back from a conference or some sort of event, we'll push out a questionnaire, yeah. and we always say, "Wow." 100% of the people who answered the questionnaire said they liked answering questionnaires. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the other 90% of the people who were actually at the conference just put the questionnaire in the bin. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. is your information correct about your clients? Okay. All right. Audit Industry comes up on the 8th of February and we've got France speaking to us. What's he going to be talking to us about? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, last year, there were a lot of uh, requests for proposal. Or every year, there are requests for proposals for auditing. Uh, NGO 
donations and things like from funding from the United Nations or funding from EU development projects. And these are the kind of things that our members could get involved with very easily. Yeah. And France is an expert. This is the kind of thing he does. So it's a new uh, business line yeah. for uh, auditors. And yeah. I think particularly uh, the members in Africa were very excited about this. Yeah, yeah. We, we talked about it, I think, the end of September or uh, beginning of September. And the deadlines then were for the end of September. So it was almost if we come in right at the very last minute. Yeah. So we saw to schedule this to take place at a better period in the in the, in the cycle and I think this is going to fall quite nicely into yep. those people yeah. yeah yeah I mean it's basically it's now that the tenders are coming out and just by total chance uh, on Friday I met someone who's involved with the tenders in uh, the European Commission right and there's a new, the, it's not a new platform but the platform they use to share the tenders is changing and the new version of the tender site is the 29th of January. Ah. So uh, I'm, I'm signed up for it. Serendipity. So we'll see, yeah. Okay, excellent stuff. Okay, so that's the audit interest group uh, at 8, uh, sorry, uh, on the 8th of February at 2 p.m. Central European time, I think? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so what's new? Regional conference dates are fixed. Yep. What? are the regional conference dates? The regional conference dates are, um, we're starting off in Marrakesh on the 16th of May. Uh, then we go to uh, Costa Rica, 27th of May. And then we go to Singapore on the 10th of June. Right. And that means we've covered Europe, Middle East and Africa, okay. the Americas and Asia Pacific. That's excellent. So this is these are messages that are going to be the same across all the conference areas, but tailored nonetheless. Yeah. Okay, right. So what are you going to be talking about? Oof. Uh, in the Europe, Middle East and Africa conference, because we're in Africa, North Africa, we'll be talking about, about Africa. So it's an Africa focus, mm -hmm. doing business in Africa, how do Africa do business, how to do more business with Africa, referral yeah. business, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also we're going to be having a focus on quality, Again, this famous uh, ISQM1, yep. it's new. Uh, AML, another acronym there, anti-money laundering. I We've like got it. a document which members can use. This is what we do for anti-money laundering. Client acceptance. Again, we have a TGS document. This is how we accept clients. Uh, there's a new briefing document uh, for managing partners to use with their firms. Um, and we're also talking about ESG. It's just solid acronyms, isn't it? I mean, you get this environment, social and government issues. So we're talking about standards, uh, regulations, wherever you are in the world, there are different regulations, yep. different things to comply with, um, and giving maybe a, an example of things about how to uh, do some uh, carbon, fo carbon footprint assessment with mm -hmm. your clients. Okay. I mean, that's one aspect of uh, hundreds in terms of ESG that you can have. I mean, you could do a, a, a you know, a governance reports you know how you are managing your firm yeah 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 okay so but it's not all going to be hard work uh, it's going to be networking yeah which is obviously the opportunity for people to introduce meet exchange and produce further business yeah uh, but f-u-n yeah exactly the other it's an acronym as well i like it <laughs> it's, that's a good one and i think you are networking is also work isn't it uh, yeah. But, you know, it shouldn't be hard work. And I think we'll probably do some sort of little webinar how to prepare yourself for the conference. Yeah. Again, always worth going to. Uh, but I don't think anyone needs to be prepared to have fun. Uh, we've got, obviously, um, there's dinner. Uh, there will be drinks. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear you're going to be fed and watered, but surely it must involve going to a volcano somewhere. This is maybe in Costa Rica. Yeah, there's a volcano on the poster. So we may end up there. Uh, I know for sure, and I'm not sure that I should say this. I wonder what Sophie's thinking, but I think we've booked a visit to the Yves Saint Laurent garden in Morocco. You know, he's got a house there, or he yeah. had a house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's a very beautiful, fancy garden, right. and it's a museum. Okay, so if you like surprises, just ignore that. Yes, yeah, sorry. If that's a spoiler, <laughs> don't listen to this podcast. I can't be trusted. But I think that's booked. So you, you might want to dress well uh, to go there. In you, Yves Saint Laurent, of course. If, if, you, if you can. Okay, all right. So fun and network is great. And finally, the quality program and briefing documents. Yeah, this was like an extra little thing I tacked on. I mean, obviously, in the, in the 
in the conferences, we'd be talking about quality, but the quality program of TGS is all the time. You know, it's an ongoing process. And there's something new every so often. So it's good to keep up with it. Yeah. So like you get your one page plan, which shows you elements where you can improve and directions. But now we're going to launch a briefing document so that you've got your quality report, which is you've got to read it, you know, and work out what it says. But this is all the information on one slide. Uh, on on the left side or the right side, I don't know what side of the brain handles it. It's the tangible mm -hmm, things, you know, mm -hmm, like what you made, mm -hmm. referral business you got, what you paid and that kind of thing. And also, you know, what do the top 10 performers in the network look like in terms of figures? And then on the other side, you've got all the intangible benefits, just as a reminder, you know, what's the power of the brand? What association is that getting you? The access to experts that you have uh, and all these sort of things that you might not normally think about. Yeah. And trying to show the rest of your firm why they're in the network, yeah. uh, which is not always obvious. I, I mean, mean, that's the critical thing, really. I mean, you, the network survives and thrives due to the members. Yeah. I mean, the network is the members. Yeah. It's not the network and the members. Yeah. It is the network is the member. Absolutely, and I was just, I've just sent the, uh, uh, the version of a presentation I gave to TGS Ed London Partners when they first joined, yeah. which, you know, I can often take my metaphors maybe a bit too far, but I made a presentation called uh, Gucci Adidas, which was a mashup of Adidas and Gucci. Right, that from, was going way too far for me. Though. Well, no, but it's, it actually going, exists. But the other thing is, like, for example, you know, you've got an Adidas Gazelle trainer, yeah, 90 euros, yeah. And I said, well, that's like your firm at the moment, quite high, you know, good brand, right. Midland. But then you've got Gucci, which is a, uh, you know, a much more expensive luxury global brand. So if you mix those two together and you make a Gucci Gazelle loafer, you can sell that for, and you can have a game, you know, how much do you think that would go? How much do you think you could sell a Gucci branded Adidas loafer from 90 euros to? The sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. And so are your portmanteau words, actually, I have to say. Yeah, Andrew, but, but I'm but, impressed. But, but that exists, that's an actual thing, and I've sent it to friends. So your Gucci Adidas loafer costs 580 euros. Yeah. So that's you, TGS, at London Partners. They're the brand value to your firm. You're no longer just a fantastic local firm, Yeah, you are now uh, branded. But that, I mean, and that's what firm. it's about. Well, no, that, it that, is. That, 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 that's what it's for. So that's the intangible uh, aspect. Yeah. Look, uh, we've covered a lot of ground again. We have. Thank um, you. And there's lots coming up, lots to do, lots to participate in. So remember, if you're listening, this is an active participatory network. So please do turn up, please do sign up, read the book and enjoy the conference. Uh, any closing words, Andrew? Um, keep your eye on the uh, TGS LinkedIn page. Things are usually shared there. And also keep your eye on the TGS website news page because we will share things there as well. It's good to stay informed and listen to your managing partner, listen to your international business coordinator. And if you're listening to this, ask your managing partner if you can come to the conference. Yeah, good idea. There's fun. At the conference. There is F U N and learning. Okay, Andrew, thank you very much. See you at the next podcast. Thank you so much, Peter. As always, bye for now.